yeah, let's try it out. And that led to it becoming bandit wrestling. And then yeah. I started helping him book. Mm-hmm. I'll book one match a show, two matches yeah. a show, to the point where I'm, I'm booking every match with the exception of the main event. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, from there again, just opportunities, yeah. weird things. Uh, I made this uh, complete asshole. Yeah. <laughs> David David Felcher. Right, right. Um, and that leads to, you know, I, now I'm doing color. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm the lead for a Pro Wrestling Freedom on the yes. High Fox Network. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it, like I said, it, it, it's a weird story. You have one year? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I've actually accomplished all this in one year. <laughs> um, I started doing spot commentary for Ohio Valley Wrestling. Yeah. Um, I just got done doing my first Smoky Mountain, a.k.a. Innovate show. Oh, wow. Um, it, it's been insane. Yeah. It's been that just one year I've had all these amazing opportunities. That's so awesome, man. It's like goals that you wanted to hit, you know, and you did, you know? I, you know, I never thought about it that yeah. way. And I'm being really honest. Yeah. It, well, All I ever wanted to do is to give back to something I love. Yeah, it's like me. I'm a fan of wrestling, and I look. And this is why. I, why do you think I do podcasts? Like this is the way to branch out and say thank you, and have a good story to talk about to people and tell. You know about the ins and outs of professional wrestling. You know, come on, it's great. Oh, how we? God, yeah. I know. It's really awesome. And it's fun when you get to you make those connections. Yes. And uh, we had a gentleman on the show by the name of Trey McQuell. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Fresh Prince of Midair from uh, obviously OI4K Academy and Rockstar Pro. Yes. Uh, he actually made his debut on Impact this year. Um, mm-hmm. I remember that being one of the stories. He was actually walking through a cemetery yeah. uh, when we recorded his show. Oh, cool. And Trey had a pretty rough childhood growing up. Yeah, yeah. And out of the blue, he's just telling this story. Yeah. Um, that literally, that. that particular episode brought tears to my eyes. Yeah, yeah. And you look at him now, and like I said, uh, Rockstar Pro Heavyweight Champ, he's yeah. wrestling for Wrestling World Fall for, yeah, no. uh, you know, Impact, all this stuff, you're like, oh yeah. my God, Trey. Yeah. Look where you've come. Yeah. And they, they make it big, you know? Hey. They get around. They get to all the good places they want to be, you know? It's like the OI at 4K now. Like, it's going to be like this, what, Thursday night on Impact? Oh my God! They're gonna have like a. Who would have thought a Bob Wire match would ever be show? No, I know, right? I know. It's like that's like we're bringing the ultra. That's the really like they don't fans don't know that that's they're stepping it up from the CZW side. You know, like the ultra violent side of wrestling. You know, really, they don't really. You know, it's really weird. And I don't know about you, but yeah. I remember getting my first VHS. Of, okay. Uh, Japanese death matches. Yes. Now this is before there was even an ECW and it was yeah. Eastern Championship wrestling. Right, right. But we would get videotapes of Funk versus Cactus Jack. Yes, yes. Like an exploding ring matches and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, watching, so o- watching Onita, guy. watching Onita, and you know, just everybody, you know, from Mister Pogo, and you know. Oh, gosh, yes. <coughs> and, you know, it was like, your mind was blown, mm-hmm. you know, that this was ever thought of. And then, you know and what? Of course, it, even after ECW, you, know, you, had you know what? ECW, I, you have to go to XPW in California, you did the same thing. I ha- it was really awesome that I got to actually, you know, when uh, CZW did the Onita once in a lifetime. That was really cool for me as a fan to meet a legend in the deathmatch world, you know? And to shake his hand, take his picture. I had one of those figures, you know, the eBay. I got it off eBay, you know, had him sign it. It was awesome. He loved it, you know. He's like, you're like a di- a fan, you know. This is like cool, you know. Oh, God, yes. <clears throat> um, I can share this one. Uh, yeah. After being a fan of my favorite Chevy Canadian for years and years and years and years and mm-hmm. years, I finally got to beat Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens. Yes. And I didn't know how I was going to react. Right. And, you know, my wife jokes around that he's my husband. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something things, cool. Everyone knows my Guess love for him. my 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 webmaster actually does Kevin's website. How's that? Okay. Shout out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm just this ridiculous. Fan. Yeah. I finally get a chance to meet him. Yeah. And I have Steve Wolf in my hand. Yeah. God, I have Steve Wolf. I mean, that was maybe one of the most famous matches of all time. Mm-hmm. So he's sitting there signing it for me, and I don't know what the state is. Yeah. But at least you brought me one of their better shows. Yeah. And I freaking died. Yeah. And he was just a, he had a 
it's like like you were talking about before, it's just a moment that you you want to exactly there's like so many moments like i remember i uh, GCW had Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I brought a wrestling. I go, brought one of those pro wrestling magazines, you know, with him and Macho Man on the cover. I'm like, this is awesome, you know. Have him sign a vintage, oh, you know. Yes, Demetri- that is a that would be one guy I would love to meet. Uh, yeah, is Ricky, great, amazing. Really, performer. I know he he does a lot of good seminars. You know, he's really out there. He really can, you know. I never. I would. I would love to. I've never done a seminar. I should just go and watch it. You know, just to check it out. I can say I've been to yeah. three or four now. Yeah. Um, now I'm uh, physically disabled. It's not like I'll ever step in a ring or take a ball. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just got done doing Jimmy Jacobs. Yes. And uh, talk about mind blowing. Mm. I mean, we you walk into. This was held at IWA Mid South yeah. uh, Little Arena, yeah. and it's twenty one wrestlers and me. Mm-hmm. And he gets us all into the ring. Yeah, tells us to sit down. Yeah, picks them up, sits them up, and for two and a half hours straight, mm-hmm. it was nothing but storytelling and promos. That's so awesome. And he would yeah. sit there and go like, "This is what Vince would say to you. Yeah, this is what Stephanie would say to you. Right, right, right. This is what Sun Hunter would say to you. Yeah, this is what I would have said to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. And just a constructive criticism mm-hmm. and looking at things. Yeah, yeah. And how he saw his mind run mm-hmm. was absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm going to have, yeah, they've done a lot of, you know, I've never gone to one. I'm going to have to check it out one of these days. But that's something. And if you ever get a chance, and I'll say this to anybody. Yeah, yeah. Dave Christ. Yes. I cannot speak high and higher. Oh, enough. he's one of my friends, man. He's awesome. He's really good guy. You know, he's, yeah, he's good. You know? I, I was fortunate enough to go up to uh, Rockstar Pro. Right. And to watch him train. Yeah. And how he breaks things down and how he teaches guys mm-hmm. to take bumps safely. Yeah. So they have long careers and mm-hmm. they're not messing up their hips and their spinal cord. No. Even though they're doing crazy stuff. I know. Uh, <laughs> Chris Silvio, his seminars yeah. uh, that he's done all over the world, mm-hmm. now, Germany and, and the, obviously... Jerry uh, Lynn, and, all these guys, yeah. Jerry Lynn, you know, like a huge, a lot of people have done them, you know, it's really like awesome. Oh. Yeah, like, it's a great way to learn. Uh-huh. And, you know, if you're in the business, it's a great way to network. Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> and that's just as important as anything. How are you going to get an opportunity otherwise? Yeah. You never know where you'll be, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you can't wait for someone else to give you this opportunity. You've got to take the bull by the horn. No, you got to knock on the door. <laughs> Come on, I'm coming, you know? But Oh, God, yes. You know, but uh, like... Most I, definitely. But what we've, let's get back to talking about ECW. Okay, we were talking a little bit about ECW. Now you got me going on that now. So, we were talking... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually uh, saw my... Right. I've been to one. I was at one ECW show that was actually in Greensboro, North Carolina, mm-hmm. um, and it was a cool night because it was Lita's last night in ECW. Yeah. a lot of people forget that she started there, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't know her as Lita. I knew her as Crack Whore. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I people screaming, "You're a Crack Whore!" Crack Whore. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know, <coughs> there was two chances that night. You're yeah. a crack whore, and thank you, Polly. Yes. Polly had to be up to the side just watching the entire show. Yeah. And uh, I remember meeting Rob Van Dam that night in the Dudley. Yeah. And uh, just being blown away. Right. Um, and not understanding what to be a mark. I remember no. yeah. going up to Tabu and calling him by his real name, and I thought he was going to punch me in the face. Yeah. Well, I always tell a story. Yeah, no, Did you hear my one? Tabu. I don't know if you heard my story ever, but I always I've told it on my podcast plenty of times. I'm sure. When I was 18 years old, I met Balls Mahoney. You know, I was working in a do- I was working in a dollar store. And I didn't know wh- what hardcore wrestling really was. ECW. You know, somebody said this guy said he's a wrestler. So then after that, I be you know I signed something and we became friends and I'm friends with him and Johnny Candido. You know, the Candido family and you know Chris Candido. God bless his soul. You know. You know, but I, you know, it, it was funny. I was in South Carolina, and what would happen was, uh, yeah. I was very close friends to a band mm-hmm. uh, by the name of Isabel's Gift. Uh, yeah. They actually were uh, on Jimmy Pop's label, mm-hmm. Bloodhound Gang. Mm-hmm. And there was this gentleman up north that was friends with both bands, Bloodhound Gang and Isabel's Gift, by the name of the Great Wrestling Commander. Mm-hmm. And he would keep Eastern Championship Wrestling right. on Saturday night. Yeah. And then send it down to South Carolina for us to watch. Oh, cool. That's and cool. we would wait by the mail for that yeah. week's episode every week. 
Yeah, it's funny how like like I got hooked on EC or TNA when it first started. You know, you gotta tape it, gotta tape it, gotta tape it, gotta tape it. DVR, DVR. You know. <laughs> oh God, yes. You know. You know, in early you think about like enjoying stuff. Early yeah. TNA. And yes. I don't think that people understand that uh, the influence Christopher Daniels had to the industry. He really did from his days in Ring of Honor to the you know it's really. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, we, a lot of people just tend to forget that when independent wrestling really started catching mm -hmm. the buzz, yeah. people weren't talking about AJ Styles. No. People weren't talking about Samoa Joe. They were talking about the Fallen Angel. It's, it's like, it's like, it, it's like, in, it's in the mid-90s, you know, in like the mid-90s, there's this company, like, that promoted, like, was my next town over, and it was called Phoenix Championship Wrestling, and it was actually the indie stars, like, Nova, and, um... You know the wall, uh, Chris Hair. You know, like everybody, all the all the big names, low key to Samoa Joe, and you know all the guys. It was like, wow, this is a company that's gonna. But you know what? His brother ran it, and then it broke down. You know, it was like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he had a lot of people signed. You know, everybody signed, man. You know, look where they are I today. Get you. I get you. Yeah. Yeah, but like, like early TNA, yeah. Daniels being involved, I couldn't miss. Yeah. No, he was just, such an amazing performer, and so ahead of his time. Yeah, it's like Ring of Honor. I, you I, know. you know, I've gone to so many Ring of Honor local shows. It's like wow. Then I stopped going. You know, I was like, oh, this is great. Like the earlier days were better. I got to see, I got to see CM Punk leave for the WWE. You know, when he faced Austin Aries. You know, the that summer of Punk storyline. Yes. Yeah, that, that was like. Uh, a, actually, it sounds funny. I'm sitting here. I'm looking at my wild ass DVD collection. And I actually have. The ROH Summer of Punk signed by Punk. Oh, sweet. Um, and the Second City Saints signed by him and um, yeah. uh, Colt Cabana. Yeah. You know what's the summer of punk was one of the greatest storylines of all time. You know what's so cool? You know what's so cool? I just love it. Ring of Honor is like 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 I get to see Alex Payne a lot. You remember him from Ring of Honor? And Pelly Pelly Primo. Still wrestling, and Shane Hagador is just still a manager. Shane Hagador was such a good worker, dude. Yeah. So I still, you know, they rest, just wrestled that on point this past week. It was fun to see them. I love, love them. They're just great oh, characters. All you want to talk about maybe one of the most underrated workers in ROH of all time? Jimmy Rave. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, oh man. Oh, Mr. Toilet, God, Mr. Oh, God, Jimmy Rave with Prince Nana. <laughs> Prince Nana. <laughs> Him and Nana. Oh, man. Hey, hey, a lot of people know, is Jimmy still wrestling? He's down he, in Atlanta, yeah. he's training now. Yeah, you really don't, you don't a, nobody see, WWE, great guy, man. you don't even see his name on the internet. Like, I don't see it. Have you? I don't see it. I never see it, you know? Uh, he's done one show in the series in the past two years. Yeah. Um, and he basically stayed pretty much to himself in yeah. Atlanta. He's worried about training. Yeah. And, you know, Jimmy was just an amazing worker back then. Yeah, he I really mean, was. people forget it. You know, it wasn't going to be Jimmy Jacobs that was the, the next big star. No. It was supposed to be Jimmy Ray. It was. It was. You're right. Yeah. But that's amazing. You know? Yeah. I know. And even though, the, you know, obviously he had some personal issues. Sure. They could have been come. They yeah. They believe you know. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. So, you know. Yeah. Big out. Shout out to Jimmy Ray. If you still lis listen to this stuff, Jimmy, we're here. <laughs> yeah, almost definitely, dude. That would be awesome. You know. I just like to that would be awesome. But, oh man! Yeah, but, yeah. It's it's a crazy time, and uh, yeah. you know, like I said, uh, it, it's almost a promoter's dream right now because there's more talent than there is company. I know, and I really truly believe that there is. Um, it, it's sick. You can go out anywhere in the country, any area of the country, mm -hmm. and find a good independent show. Yeah, and there's a lot out and, there. There's really. Yeah. You know, there's like I said, and Jersey All Pro Wrestling. I was going to say that's another local company that's been around a long time too. You know, for the independent wrestling oh, God. on the Jersey East Coast. Jersey All Pro has some crazy shit. They are so good. Uh, yeah, because they they still have the originals. Monster Mac, Homicide. You know, it's like the it's crazy. They're still doing good. You know, but Homicide is now a trainer at the compound for GCW alongside. Ooh, I never thought Homicide would have become a trainer. Homicide and Nick Gage, the one and only. CZW. Oh, geez, I mean, geez, not, man. yep, yeah. But. Actually, you know what? I had a, a pretty close friend of mine, uh, mm -hmm. Shane Andrews. Yeah. 
uh, who wrestled in CCW back in 2002. Shane is a mm-hmm. was trained by Mr. Fuji, mm-hmm. um, and wrestles pr- predominantly in the South now. Yeah, but uh, Shane actually would go up to CCW and wrestle with like.